ओके गौरव भाई लाइव कर लिए छे वे ओके विल स्टार्ट मी चलो स्टार्ट था એટલે મને કો ओके स्टार्ट ओके वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल टुडे वी हैव अ फैकल्टी डॉक्टर पार्थ त्रिवेदी ही इज अ लेक्चरर एट सीएम पटेल कॉलेज ऑफ फिजियोथेरेपी एट गांधीनगर he is uh, he is also freelancing peer reviewer of the uh, and go uh, and lago publication he is academic editor at asian journal of orthopedic research he is a review of general and uh, harmonized science he has a very much uh, very well clinical uh, more than 5 years experience at clinical at uh, cu sir physiotherapy college as well as un meta institute of cardiology i welcome you sir uh, dr parth trivedi for the, this wonderful webinar on the importance of the ethical clearance and ctr registration i hope it will be much benefit it will be more beneficial to our phd scholars as well as the mpt graduates for the research and other publication i welcome you sir uh, a very good evening uh, thank you dr gaurav uh, first of all i would like to uh, thank uh, amdavad physiotherapy college and parul university uh, for inviting me for this wonderful topic uh now uh, directly without wasting much uh, time i would like to start with this uh, topic uh yes why ethical clearance or why ctri registration is necessary that is the biggest uh, you know query in our field as of now and whenever we talk about ethics or whenever we talk about any research okay the first thing which everybody will ask whether the research is uh, approved by any organization or whether the research is been approved by any ethics committee okay so uh, what do you mean by ethics when we talks about ethics ethic is a general term and uh, if it if, if i want to just say it in a layman term it is just about morals okay and ethics can be in every part of our life so for example i am supposed to join to my duty at 9 o'clock in the morning so my ethics says i am supposed to be there at my workplace at 9 o'clock yes so if probably at some odd day if i am 9 5 or 9 10 it's all okay but i cannot be regularly late to my workplace yes uh, second thing is uh i am not supposed to bribe anybody i am not supposed to you know i am supposed to wear the seat belt i am not in current scenario i am supposed to wear mask i am supposed to have hand sanitizers these all are coming into our ethics so ethics is basically a moral phenomena and when we talk about morals then why it is termed into a law that is a biggest question mark agar hum aisi baat karte hai ki ethics to har insaan ke paas hota hai so uh when we talks about ethics every individual say that i am ethical person yes so if you are a ethical person yes why do we need a law to regulate us so nowadays it is not just limited to a ethical committee and it is not just limited to just see what is going on so in current scenario of covid even a lay person has come to know that there are phases in clinical trial and the drug doesn't come directly into the market yes so today we won't be focusing into the drugs and i may not be the right person to say what are the drugs effects and what is the bioavailability and bioequivalence about drugs but yes i would be highlighting it on what can be the impact of ethics and what can be the impacts of ethical clearance in our field that is physical and what can be done if i want to register into ctri yes so just moving on ahead with it what we would be saying is in today's uh, lecture or webinar is what is ethics and what are the basic principles of ethics which we need to see and those principles are basically from uh, icmr indian council for medical research so this term is nowadays very familiar every newspaper and every media uh, is speaking about icmr guidelines and icmr things so uh, related to covid 19 so people might have come across icmr recently but they know now how is an ethical body framed that is the first thing and what does this ethical body look after yes what is clinical trial registry of india uh, what do we do in this 
what to register uh, when to register how who to register how to register and practical tips for registrations so as i said what is ethics it is basically a moral principles that governs a person behaviors of conducting for an activity so we may say that you know this person is unethical in this or probably he is not having any morals or he is not he is very cruel yes but for what reasons and probably for if i don't uh, give uh, you know some uh, biscuit or some uh, food to a, a street beggar okay some people may say that he is not having any morals or he is not having any ethics he should help poor yes so this kinds of things in day to day life we are seeing it at every place but when it comes to research what is research you know you are already searching things which are already there or probably you are searching for things which have not taken place yes so for example if i talk about i'm just giving you an uh, brief example that uh, efficacy of hamstring stretchings on low back pain okay so when i talk about efficacy of hamstring stretchings on low back pain is it going to really be helpful to the patient or not first question second question whether this kind of research has been conducted previously or it has been it is just a new research which is coming out of it if it is a new research is it a necessary research and if it has already been conducted at for, for example efficacy of hamstring i have seen and i am reading various articles like you know if somebody has conducted a research on uh, efficacy of hamstring stretching in malaysian females okay so uh, in low back pain uh, in malaysian group of people somebody will come up with saying that i am doing it on indian population so you know i have a new topic i have a mother study i'll simply do copy paste and uh, probably i will have a part, uh, publications and based on that you will take an ethics clearance and you will take you will try to change the grammatical errors and we'll get the plagiarism done out and you'll have a publication so is it necessary really so that is what matters and that is what uh, is the concern yes so ethics when you are right when you are true yes you need to be sure enough that you are not harming anybody yes so that is why we are concerned about ethics okay so quickly moving forward yes so i'm just giving you uh, a brief uh, you no know, few articles or few newspaper cuttings like what we can see over here is where my cursor is moving like a horror film what was the elephant man drug testing trial what is pgn 1412 and what happened to the men involved yes so this was a testing done in france and there were very much side effects so you can see a catastrophic clinical test that left six volunteers fighting for life and intensive care unit became notorious as elephant man drug trial because of the horrific side effects okay next you can six, see 88 clinical trial volunteers died in four years due to direct side effects so this is what this is health ministry data this is indian health ministry data so with little transparency in how such deaths are investigated and new rules relaxing how clinical trials are conducted in this data so this is what this is i you can see this is february 2019 so just last year and you can see again a france drug trial brain man dies in hospital so just because you want to do a research or probably we are interested in coming up with new things we cannot compromise with anybody's life or probably whether it is a human or it is an animal testing okay so we should be very much cautious enough while we are promoting or while we are conducting a research so that is why it is very much important so we have a uh, uh, initially uh, i think before this new drugs and clinical trials rules came into picture in 2019 there was only one guideline which was icmr guidelines for uh, uh, ethics committee uh, now uh, based on this new drugs and clinical trial rules 2019 i am specify it as rules because if it is just no matter of ethics there won't be a rule chapter coming into picture so when the rules are coming into picture it means it is a law okay so when it is a law we are supposed to abide to that law okay so 
as we see that we had lockdown phases and we had unlock phases and from tomorrow onwards we have one more unlock that is unlock 3 so where night curfew is removed so until before this even today if i roam around after nine o'clock in the city i am uh, i am culprit for ro roaming around in the city but if i roam around tomorrow i am not a culprit so we need to follow this rules that is new drugs and clinical trial rules which are from 2019. So what does these rules say? So in this, the ethical committees are basically bifurcated into two things. One is ethics committee for clinical trial, bioavailability and bioequivalent study. Okay. So uh, and another one is ethics committee for biomedical and health research. So the basic thing which on to the left side says any study, any research which is related to clinical trials, whether drug or non-drug, okay, secondary bioavailability and bioequivalent. So based on the drug pharmacokinetics and drug studies, okay, you are supposed to register in the ethics committee related to CD, CDESCO. Uh, we would, I would show you uh, what is CDESCO. Uh, so this uh, is the uh, the ethics committee needs to be registered with CDESCO, okay. And uh, there are various uh, other uh, classification, I uh, mean, uh, prerequisites where how does this ethics committee move on and how, what is the necessities of this ethics committee. But to cut it short enough, yes, uh, we the ethics committee are basically divided as i said into two parts one is for your clinical trials bioequivalence and bio studies uh, bio uh, availability studies and they these if you want to do these kinds of studies you need to get a permission from a ethics committee which is registered with sedesco okay and whenever you are supposed to do with a study which is related to biomedical and health research health research where it is mostly like a survey kind of studies or uh, you know where it is not an interventional studies you need to go with uh, icmr okay so indian council for medical uh, research so these are the guidelines everything is almost similar apart from the numbers of people and a uh, few requisites like uh, in sedesco we need a female member compulsory a female member is necessary so this is what uh, the classifications is now post 2019. So we are into 2020. We need to follow these rules. So yes, uh, this ICMR principles uh, like 2017, we have uh, basic ethics principles. After this, seeing into the principles, we'll see what are the members of the ethics committee. And uh, then we'll go on with CTRIs. So basically, uh, the first principle is principle of essentiality. So as I said, uh, whenever you are doing a study uh, in, a, in a research, uh, whether it is on human participants or non-human participants, but basically when much considered on human participants, this study is essential. Okay, whether the study is essential and is the research problem which has been stated is going to come out with any significant outcomes okay we cannot just have a study okay or we cannot just put a research problem in terms like uh, as i said efficacy of hamstring stretchings on low back pain okay in indian population so now if a study is done on indian population which says yes uh, if you do an hamstring stretching low back pain is relieved okay so this is what a study is done in Indian population and to bifurcate or perhaps to get a publication or perhaps to get your uh, dissertations done, you say it efficacy of hamstring study in uh, Gujarat women population for low back pain or probably you, by, you say it uh, in a different terms. But is it necessary? Okay. Or is this research going to come out with a new outcome okay so this you need to be ethically sound enough and morally good enough that if this human participant is essential for the purpose proposed research or whether it is all okay if you teach the 
self stretches and you see it out okay so this is what the first principle says are now so principle of essentiality is very much important in your ethics principle of voluntariness <coughs> so you cannot have a random person mere ko aaj aisa laga ki yaar mera friend mujh se help lena lete rehta hai so i should do a research and uh, if my friend is taking uh, you know help from me regularly he should oblige me and uh, he should come and uh, participate in my research but if he is not interested in participating in the research you cannot force that person so i am just talking about friend but you even in a normal population you cannot force anybody anybody here that i want you as a participant whether that condition that patient or that human participant okay is full you know fully uh, having the criteria and it's fitting in your inclusion criteria but if that individual says no you are supposed to leave for the research and you are supposed to administer whatever the treatment is as per the protocol so you need to respect for the right of participant to agree or not to agree to participate in the research and also it is very much important it is very 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 much important to note it down that participant can leave the research at any point of time at any point of time so today you would have seen uh, i think couple of days back or three days back uh, i had seen i read in a newspaper stating it first dose of our co vaccine was administered at aims hospital delhi to one of the patient or to one of the participant i should not say patient uh, it has been now replaced by participant so uh, if one participant who was the first participant who took the vaccine shot and he was supposed to i'm just uh, saying it if he is supposed to take it next vaccine shot in next week or probably after 10 days and if he is not interested no one can force for that participant okay so he can drop it at any point of time this is not like a bond that you can force that person to work around so first part, uh, principle was essentiality whether it is very much essential to have a human participant first thing second thing voluntariness of that human participant third thing principle of non exploitation yes so non exploitation means uh you cannot have any uh what we say uh, uh a person who is very much essentially needing that so for example if you say that you know you are doing a research on uh, uh, ultrasound on uh, shoulder uh, for pa shoulder okay and if that person if you can say that person that you know if you participate in this uh, study uh i would give you uh, only 5 rupees or 10 rupees okay so like that also you cannot exploit that patient, uh human participant okay and also you you are supposed to you are supposed to be very much careful enough that you are equally selecting and giving the benefits to all the study participants so for example you have 10 study participants in your study you are equally giving response and equally justifying these 10 okay aisa nahi hona chahiye first participant aaya to usko you are giving a more priority compared to the last participant okay so each and every study participant should be very much important to you so this is the third principle so first principle was principle of essentiality second principle was principle of voluntariness third principle was principle of non exploitation so what does this non exploitation says research participants are equally tably selected so that the benefits and burdens of the research are distributed fairly and without discrimination principle of social responsibility okay so you as a researcher you have a social responsibility that you are not harming an individual you are not harming a society so this is very much less into the terms of physical therapy when it is considered because we actually don't have majority of drugs involvement but there are very much uh, certain kinds of drugs are there which can be lethal and which can have an effect on genetics also 
okay so if you are having or if you are administering any kind of those kind of treatment which has societal effects okay so uh, which can be carried forward into next generations or which can be transferred to into the community uh, those kinds of things should not be done and should be taken it very carefully so research is planned and conducted in such a way that the society harmony is not being disturbed so this is very much important for our sake we cannot disturb the human participant and we also cannot disturb the society the next thing is principle of ensuring privacy and confidentiality yes this is uh, a very much essential again because you know you would have seen uh, uh when this covid scenario started people had started uh, circulating the uh, patient's name and uh, even the addresses and even all the data so until and unless it was not a research that is all uh, it can be understood that it is like people were very much afraid enough uh, looking into this but uh, when it is uh, in terms of research you should not disclose it if until and unless it is very much necessity and it should be disclosed to appropriate authority only you cannot have it publicly okay so you need to have a confidentiality and privacy of a human participant okay and you should protect his or her identity so this is what uh, the uh, fifth principle states that principle of minimal risk um risk minimization so this is the sixth principle okay so what we say that you know uh, we have a tendency uh, stating it that when the when uh, it comes for publications okay so uh, three four five six publications uh, names are there written okay so first author second author third author fourth author fifth author uh whenever it comes to a cost uh, concern that is each and every author or probably a stakeholder responsible for whatsoever negative outcome is there then the question comes it is the responsibility of principal investigator no it is not the responsibility whole and sole responsibility of principal investigator i don't say that it is uh, the responsibility it is not the responsibility of principal investigator yes it is the responsibility of principal investigator but each and every person each and every person involved okay each and every person involved in this has having responsibility that the risk should be minimized you cannot have a risk pool protocol which would hamper either the human participant or the society okay so basically you can see that we have principles of essentiality we have principles of voluntariness principle of non exploitation principle of social responsibility principle of ensuring privacy and confidentiality and principle of risk minimization okay so we have seen six principles we would be moving on with the next principles next six principles principle of professional competence this principle says that only an only person who is professionally competent only an only person who is professionally competent should treat or should be involved into research so for example uh, again taking that same example uh, efficacy of hamstring stretchings on low back pain okay so if it is my research and if i am doing that research as a physical therapist okay as a physical therapy it is my responsibility to administer stretching i cannot hand it over to my third year student or i cannot hand it over to my undergraduate students or who is not actually come out with a degree okay and secondary thing is you are supposed to inform to the participant also that who is the principal investigator and whose responsibility is that okay so that is why we have an informed consent uh, part in all to this but you will look after it later on uh, this is very much important so moving on with the next uh, principle is principle of maximization of benefits okay 
so you are supposed to term the research goal in such a way that it should not be having only a goal of doing research or probably into coming into a publication you need to have a goal stating it it should be beneficial to the society okay it should be beneficial to the society okay so that is the next principle uh, principle of in institutional arrangements okay so institutional arrangements so you have if you are if you are reading articles okay uh, at the end or probably in this first page they would have mentioned about conflicts of interest okay so conflicts of interest is the part of one of this principle that you know wherever you are doing a research is that institutional agreeing with the research which is being conducted jahan pe bhi aap research kar rahe ho wo institute agree kar rahi hai ki nahi kar rahi hai for getting that research done whether that institute is providing you a uh, uh, approval for getting your infrastructures manpowers funds and really etc etc so that is one of the principle you need to have that into loop and you need to acknowledge that whenever the things are being done moving on principle of transparency and accountability you cannot accountability is again you cannot move it uh, move uh, from your responsibilities okay so if something wrong happens you can say you cannot say that you know my institution has done this or probably my co author has done this or uh, my principal investigator was not okay aapko wo cheez pehle se hi define kar deni hai ki kiska kya domain hoga who so however will be having what domain कौन सी किस चीज पे करेगा एंड सेकेंडरी यू नीड टू रजिस्टर इन दी रजिस्ट्री सो एज आई सेड वी आर गोइंग टू लुक आफ्टर क्लिनिकल ट्रायल रजिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडिया ओके सिमिलरली यू हैव डब्ल्यू एच ओ रजिस्ट्री सिमिलरली यू हैव एवरी कंट्री इज रजिस्ट्री विल सी दैट ऑल्सो वेन वी कम्स अबाउट सी टी आर आई सो यू नीड टू हैव वेरी मच ट्रांसपेरेंसी अबाउट ऑल दिस थिंग्स third thing is uh, moving uh, sorry not third but moving on ahead with it principles of totality and responsibilities as i said every individual associated with that research okay is responsible for giving or for any un uh, circumstances which happens which are not supposed to happen okay to us cheez ke liye sabhi log responsible hai and definitely a principle of environment protection we need to have a goal that we are not disturbing the environment so this is practically we are as far as physical therapy is considered uh, we definitely don't harm the environments um, uh, we don't have any drugs involved so what are the basic principles which we need to take care as a physical therapist the principles of essentiality first thing which we need to take voluntariness okay third thing is non exploitation these three principles are very much important fourth is privacy and confidentiality fifth is risk minimization uh professional exp uh, competence seventh okay uh eighth your transparency and accountability and your ninth principle of totality of responsibility so these are the uh things which as a physical therapist which needs to be taken care of which needs to be taken or which needs to be emphasized more rather than all other principles and these are the latest principles as far as icmr 2017 is considered so yes moving on towards uh, compositions of ec ec means ethical committee as i said we have two different ethical committees now with uh, uh, 2019 rule uh, one is going to be registered with sedesco and another is going to be registered with icmr uh, i have taken this from icmr okay i am acknowledging this so this is the members so who can be the members so one is a chairperson okay the form ethical committee hona chahiye so the chairperson is the person who leads from the front okay so that is the chairperson second is member secretary okay sorry third one is social scientist fourth one is clinician fifth one is layman sixth uh, can be the supporting staff okay technical person legal expert and basic medical scientist okay so these people needs to be there into an ethical committee okay so 
yes i i'm going out in very i think i'm uh, speeding it up with the uh, composition because you know uh, every ethical organizations has different people and different uh, compositions and different ratios but please make ensure that you are at least having these people in the ethics committee okay because i have personally seen and i have came across various kinds of ethical committee who just you know in the terms of uh, issuing an ethics certificate they just um, have uh, they charge you and they they issue a ethics committee certificate and probably nowadays with the good journals and especially with the ctri coming into picture uh at the point of time uh, certain ethics committees are not valid also so please make sure that whenever you approach for an ethical committee you see the structure of that ethics committee and are these people there as per this composition so first thing is chairperson so kon ho sakta hai who can become a chairperson first thing is if i am having an ethics committee for example in my institute that is chanchal ben mukherjee patel college of physiotherapy i am having an ethics committee the chairperson should not be the person from my institute okay to jo chairperson hoga wo ethics committee ka chairperson will not be the person from my institute so it is clearly mentioned that he or she should not be affiliated with the organization okay कौन हो सकता है वेल रिस्पेक्टेड पर्सन इन योर फील्ड यू कैन हैव अ फिजिकल थेरापिस्ट यू कैन हैव एन मेडिकल पर्सन हु कैन बी द चेयर पर्सन सो व्हाट्स एवर इट इज क्या रोल है रेगुलरली एथिक्स कमिटीज मीटिंग्स करवाना एंड टेकिंग द रिस्पांसिबिलिटीज ऑफ द डिसीजंस एंड फंक्शनिंग्स ऑफ द कमिटी सेकेंडरी मेंबर सेक्रेटरी नाउ द मेंबर सेक्रेटरी शुड बी फ्रॉम द इंस्टीट्यूट द मेंबर सेक्रेटरी शुड बी from the institute okay so this is what it is it is affiliated so it should be from my institute itself okay irrespective of the hierarchy wo institute khud decide kar sakta hai but the member secretary should be from the institute itself okay and definitely when he or she is the member secretary that person should have knowledge of ethics okay uh, again he or she has almost similar roles like chairperson apart from it the chairperson the member secretary maintains all the data okay and all the records of the ethical committee third thing is basic medical scientist uh i request you to please mute your uh, microphones okay so the third thing is a uh, basic medical scientist uh, this basic medical scientist is necessary because aap human participant pe study karna chahte so when you are doing a study on human participant yes so that person should be of knowledge and he or she has to put inputs into that study so that is why it, that person can be affiliated or cannot be an affiliated so that person agar aapko uh, you can have one or two basic medical scientists okay so you can have one person from your institute and one person from another institute or else you can have two people and one people also from your institute but it should not be biased okay clear then clinician okay so as i said basic medical scientist uh, can be a non medical or medical person okay uh like a bsc or msc person or whatsoever it is and can be an mbbs or a, a doctorate person and like people like us also uh the third thing is uh fourth thing sorry is clinician okay so clinician jo hota hai wo actually medical qualification ka banda hona chahiye so that person should have a medical knowledge and should be expertise in training and uh taking over parts of this ethical committee so they should be affiliated and cannot it can be they cannot be uh, non affiliated also okay so basically what is their role to see the sample size benefits and risk of the investigations or research problem whether the methodology is right study settings are right and uh, if what the statistics also then comes the role of legal expert yes 
so legal person what that person says is that in case if something wrong happens okay in what ways we can defend ourselves okay and in what ways uh, these things should not be done as per law okay so that is why this person should be uh, it can be an affiliated or non affiliated person in generally uh, uh, with the degree of law and if possible a medical person who has done llb should be there into this ethics committee okay to wo generally kya dekhta hai clinical trials agreements and mous or regulatory affairs things then social scientist okay or philosopher or uh, ethicist this kinds of people why their role is there their role is if you are doing a study as i said is it going to harm to a population or not wo ek society ko harm karega ki nahi karega okay so and local cultural values are also associated it with it so looking into that picture that person's presence is very much necessary this would these you know their presence is necessary as far as law is concerned and as i said we are not dealing with uh, any much more societal issue so this should not be a trouble for us but this should be the in part of ethics committee and last one is a lay person okay so lay person needs to be a literate person who understands the issues okay and probably wo ek uh, patient ho sakta hai ek uh, participant ho sakta hai or any person from the community just to make sure that he or she can be the witness okay when that person or then issues uh, if something wrong happens okay so quickly revising it uh, we have compositions like chairperson member secretary basic medical scientist okay so uh, basic thing is uh, two positions are non affiliated one is lay person and another is chairperson clinician legal experts social scientists and lay people okay one more thing which comes important over here is a uh, declaration of helsinki okay so this is very much important and uh, if you read uh, good articles uh, it would be said that you know as far as declaration of helsinki is considered uh, the ethics committee approval was taken okay or ethics committee was laid down from a declaration of helsinki so this declaration came Uh, from 18th world uh, medical association general assembly wma is nothing but world medical association uh, in 1964 which said that health of my patient will be my first consideration okay so mera patient meri study participant ka responsibility mera hai aur kisi aur ka nahi hai okay so that should be the first more consideration and a physician shall act in patient's best interest when providing medical care so if something wrong happens okay if something wrong happens while giving an hamstring stretching and if the pain increases just to document your results please don't spoil the health of that study participant you need to take care of that study participant or the volunteer so that you know you are ethically right and now okay so this is what declaration of helsinki is there declaration of helsinki is very huge if you if we fight talk it around i can say about somewhere around 2 to 3 hours i can talk on this helsinki but this is a brief outline about it okay so now we are going on towards a case scenario and after we see two kinds of cases case 1 and case 2 scenarios uh, uh we would see with ctris okay so case one scenario a community survey on prevalence of domestic violence among secondary school students so ye study kya karna chahta hai ye study ek survey karna chahta hai ki wo dekhna chahta hai ki kitna percentage aur kitna prevalence hai domestic violence ka school students mein okay so please don't see the red part aap red part abhi se mat dekhiye you just see what kind of questions can come okay so first question can come is humko kis se approval lena hai okay whom should be concerned either students school parents kahan se concern lena hai humko is cheez ke bare mein 
so we should take concern from ministry of education if it is on a large scale and school principal also okay so uh, question comes agar whatever what is what is it if it is a question is of domestic violence in secondary school students why we should take permissions from a principal or ministry of education why 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 not we directly approach to those students we are taking approval from these two organizations because hum kyu le rahe wo the organizations approval kyunki students school mein ja rahe education le rahe if they are not going to school if they are not going to education they are not school students simple it is so we need to take approval from ministry of education and we need to have approval from school principal also okay and secondary thing is as students are small enough they are not legally matured enough so the concern should be taken from parents okay concern should be taken from parents so there is these are the two different words approval and concern अप्रूवल एक अलग चीज है कंसर्न एक अलग चीज है अप्रूवल मतलब परमिशन कंसर्न मींस हाँ मतलब दे आर वॉलेंटरली पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन यस और नो सो अप्रूवल अगर इफ यस देन ओनली यू टेक दो स्कूल स्टूडेंट्स एंड आल्सो यू आर सपोज टू टेक कंसर्न फ्रॉम दी पेरेंट्स नाउ इफ 50 परसेंट से ज्यादा आ जाता है ओके डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस ओके so what are we supposed to do we are hide we are supposed to hide that data and we are supposed to manipulate as far as what we are consider or what should be done so the thing is we are supposed to discuss this on the ethical committee discussions ki agar aisi cheez aayegi if this kind of things happen i will take these kinds of steps okay and the same these kind of steps needs to be informed to the guardians the third thing is now i have decided that i am supposed to publish it okay and can i set the abstract to the presentation for a conference and then later on publication so this is one of the major thing in our thing yes hum ye uh, major concern rehta hai hamara ki hum uh, ek to conference mein bhi karna chahte hai wo paper and next thing is we want to publish it also so yes the thing is that you need to inform it to both of them you are supposed to inform to the conference person also and you are supposed to inform to the publication also okay so this is what your ethical ground says and you are supposed to mention the same if possible into the ethics committee the question is that ethics committee to approval ke pehle aa jata hai so uh, how can we inform to those people no the ethics committee needs to regularly check your that what is the status of your research can i submit the same paper in different language yes you can definitely submit it but you need to take prior permission from your uh, first publication yes the second case scenario is does hrp hormone replacement therapy hrp improve vasomotor symptoms among menopausal women in indian primary care clinic okay now somebody says that you know it is unethical because this study has been done in various sectors aur wo kar chuka hai kai jagah pe malaysia mein kar chuke hai kai jagah pe us mein kar chuke hai to humko ye study karni chahiye ki nahi so this is the biggest question which we are now facing it okay so your research problem should be justified to these ethics people and please make sure that you are ethically sound enough as i said principles of essentiality first principle will this research is just for your name sake or probably for your uh, publications or it is going to benefit to the society when you know that hormonal replacement therapy has if uh, improved vasomotor symptoms in malaysian people based on the uh, physiology so probably the same physiology will be having with, will have with indian people so it will definitely help it out or probably if it has not helped out the same side effects will be seen in indian people but if you can justify that you know indian women and malaysian women have a difference in their pathophysiology in their systems and probably hrt would be having beneficial effects in indian people then you can have the study to be done okay 
do we still need to obtain ethics approval yes you are supposed to obtain an ethics approval at any cost any cost up to ethical whether it is a case scenario or whether it is just a observational studies you are supposed to get the ethics approval i am worried that if i start explaining to the patient about the possibility of carcinoma breast they won't participate how can i play down with this possible side effects so now this is your duty aapko ye samajhna hai ki bhai ye risk hai you are supposed to tell that to the patient you cannot hide the side effects okay because if you hide the side effects you are playing with the study participants life so you you have no rights to play with those and in case if something wrong happens you are officially liable for a law uh, and you you can be in prison for that so please make sure that the duty of researcher is to ensure the benefits of the ensure the patient understand the benefits and risk of the treatment okay and the last thing is while writing the introduction and discussion of my paper or thesis i copied many sentences so we generally have favorite keys okay today morning itself i was uh, into one of the webinar organized by implement uh, gandhinagar uh, for this uh, plagiarism so the person the resource person said which are your favorite keys so our favorite keys are always control c and control v okay and now uh, one more key has added control a so hum select all kar dete hai control copy all kar dete hai we paste it all okay we just change the scramble the words to check it out whether it make sure that it doesn't come under plagiarism Uh, certain people don't do that also wo seedha ka seedha copy paste kar dete but wo nahi hona chahiye please look for plagiarisms and please make sure that you are ethically sound enough so this ends with our ethical chapter of this uh, webinar so we have almost taken somewhere around more than 20 25 minutes or probably 40 minutes i think for ethics issue and now we would be moving on towards the next scenario uh, which is next topic is clinical trial registry of india okay so now as i said uh, we have two ethics committee the first ethics committee is uh, the committee which looks after the clinical trials bioavailability and bioequivalence studies jo cedesco ke taraf se registry hona chahiye and the third one uh, second one is uh, biomedical and human research registry okay so these two registries uh these two ethical committees ka ek hi concern hota hai ki kabhi bhi jab ko aap registry mein jana hai to uska approval chahiye humko okay so uh, there are various registries uh, various uh, organizations uh, apart from or throughout the nations us ka ek alag se registry hai uk ka registry alag hai world health organizations ka registry alag hai india ka registry alag hai so different countries have different clinical trial registry okay uh, to our good side clinical trial registry has a link with uh, the world health organization so whatever the data or whatever the registry is there of the research on clinical trial registry it is directly shown to who also so it becomes very much transparent about our research okay so pehle kya hota tha ki you know uh, trials hote the and that trials were never documented okay so there were chances that these trials were uh, the side effects of the trials were hidden and people used never used to come and there was uh, you know issues coming up so that is the reason clinical trial registry came into picture so any clinical trial any clinical trial irrespective whether it is allopathy or it is physiotherapy if you are doing clinical trial you are supposed to register it in ctri at least at least in ctri so clinical trials holds enormous potentials for benefiting patients and improving therapeutic regimens and ensuring advancement in medical practice that is evidence based so currently because of covid 19 our society has come to know that um, what is evidence based practice humko kyu evidence based practice karna chahiye the reason is just to give and apt and perfect treatment to the patient okay so that was the reason that we were uh, initially uh, things were not published okay 
सो इनिशियली टिल फेब्रुवारी टू थाउजेंड एंड सेवेंटीन सी टी आर आई क्या करता था बैक डेटेड मतलब रिट्रोकेट स्टडीज भी रजिस्टर कर लेता था इन टू देयर रजिस्ट्रीज बट आफ्टर टू थाउजेंड एंड सेवेंटीन ओनली प्रोस्पेक्टिव स्टडीज सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई वॉन्ट टू डू क्लिनिकल ट्रायल ऑन लो बैक पेन ओके एंड my aim is to register a patient or i i want to start to administer a treatment on a patient from 1st of august i should have ctri number till 30th of july if i don't have till that 30th july tak mujhe mere paas number nahi hai ctri ka so i cannot intake on first okay so this is for clinical trials especially so it is a part of icmr okay uh, National Institute of Medical Sciences. Okay, so uh, first trials in India that was launched on 20th July 2017. So as I said, from 2017, sorry, 2007 से लेकर 2017 uh, retrograde चलता था. Nowadays it has stopped. So only prospective studies are there. And overall, everything is controlled by Drugs Controller General of India (DCGI). Okay. So as I said. any researcher who plans to conduct a trial involving human participants involving human participants whether it is drugs surgical procedures devices educational behavior treatments rehabilitation strategies but agar wo drugs hai to bhi usko ctri mein register irrespective whether they are drugs or not it is supposed to be registered with clinical trial registry of india especially with the ayush also okay so after a trial is registered trialists are expected to regularly update i will show you uh, on my ctri i have one registered trial i will show you how it looks like after this all updates and changes will be recorded and available for public display so what is the mission their mission is to have a transparent clinical trial and people should be aware that you know uh, if something comes into picture if something comes into market for the treatment it is having a trial and it is a safe procedure okay so as i said uh, prospective uh, prospectively registered karte the pehle uh, retrospective ab nahi hoga uh, vision is to register all the clinical trials in all the regions okay now what to register okay so i again coming to same things all the surgical procedures preventive measures lifestyle modifications devices educational and behavioral treatments rehabilitation strategies even with the department of ayurveda yoga naturopathy unani siddha homeopathy all are expected to register in ctr okay i would say whenever you are into a doubt so for example if you think that you are conducting a huge observational study so should i doubt it in clinical trials or should i not doubt so whenever you are into doubts please register itself okay only thing is they will uh, if if not good they will reject it back okay so the procedure is like that uh, you need to put uh, you need to sign up first in ctri aapko sign up karna rehta hai sign up karke aapko approval aata hai from their end that you are approved to uh, register your clinical trial so then they have a data set okay i we are going to look after that data set in the next uh, slides aapko us data sets ke hisab se usko fill up karta rehna padta hai uh, which includes all your uh, uh, details uh, uh, details regarding uh, your uh, uh, principal investigator details secondary investigator details sponsoring authorities your interventional protocols your publications etc 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 ethical committee approvals ye sab uske andar hota hai fir they monitor it okay and they lock all the items only uh, uh, regular items jisko aapko interventions and outcomes to update karna rehta hai wo unse unlock karwa ke uh, wapas se update karna rehta hai so i will show you how does it works okay so uh, we are supposed to register before the first participant enrollment किसका रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी होता है इट इज येस द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ प्रिंसिपल इन्वेस्टिगेटर ओके एंड इन केसेस वेयर द रजिस्टर्ड इज बीन स्पॉन्सर्ड सो इफ यू फील दैट यू नो 
your electrotherapy uh, machine company is sponsoring you can ask that machine company or equipment manufacturer ki wo aapki jagah register karwa de but from my perspective it is always better when you are doing research to aap hi register karwaiye aur aap hi uska पब्लिकेशन करे ना कि सम अदर पर्सन गवर्नस यू सो इन मल्टी सेंटर कैन मल्टी स्पॉन्सर पी आई का रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी रहता है मल्टी नेशनल ट्राइल्स यस सो नाउ द कंसर्न इज इफ यू सीन दैट इन मॉडर्न देर इज अ कंपनी नेम एज मॉडर्ना विच इज लीडिंग इन कोविड नाइनटीन वैक्सीन इट इज अस कंपनी so that company is take, uh, is waiting for a appro approval nod for conducting trials in india usne us mein trials kar diye hai but india mein trial baki hai uska so wo kya hua that is a multinational trial okay so this is a multinational trial so that has again supposed to be registered into ctri with indian pi barabar indian principal investigator to agar kal uth ke indian सेटअप के अंदर कुछ गलत होता है तो दिस इंडियन प्रिंसिपल इन्वेस्टिगेटर का रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है उस चीज पे ओके सो दैट इज वाई दे आस्क यू टू रजिस्टर इन इंडियन विथ इंडियन पी आई ओके हाउ टू रजिस्टर वी वुड बी प्रैक्टिकली गोइंग ऑन टू दिस वेबसाइट सी टी आर आई डॉट एन आई सी डॉट इन फिर उसके अंदर यूजर नेम एंड पासवर्ड करना पड़ता है मेल फ्रॉम देअर साइड फॉर अप्रूवल so agar once they approve and then you can register for the trial and then you are supposed to go for new trials so this is the data set okay so this picture which you see is the data set which is available on the ctri website also so kya kya hona chahiye uske andar so public title of the study so we will take one simple example uh efficacy of hamstring stretching on low back pain okay so this becomes your scientific uh, a randomized control study okay a randomized control trial so that becomes your scientific study the title which says that you have seen that efficacy of hamstring uh, stretching in low back pain with a effect of randomized control trial so public title kya hona chahiye jo lay person bhi samajh sake it can, it is very short the so effect of hamstring stretches in low back pain it can be that or uh, is hamstring stretching effective on low back pain so whatsoever it is you can have a very simple public title okay if there is any short form you are supposed to mention short forms also acronyms also sir yes hello yes part of your screen is not visible sir and my screen is not visible yeah yes yeah, sir uh just wait a minute sir your screen is visible it's okay okay continue sir is it visible yeah yeah it is okay uh so uh we'll start it with again uh yes we'll start with again uh public thank you pdd i hope things are uh there is still so this patient your ppt is been not viewed now uh now no no just wait a minute kindly stop the screen sharing and uh, do again for the yes yes i looks it looks like my meat has hanged okay is it now uh, can you see my screen still not sir no no i wonder why now no 
no, nothing can be seen even my browser is not no seen. no no can i rejoin it can i rejoin yes you can rejoin yes No. I hope now this screen is visible. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, yes. I think it was a connectivity error. Okay. okay. Anyways, uh, we will start with it now. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, sorry for the disturbance uh, and technical issues. Uh, so, we have a CTRI data set. Okay, and this CTRI data set, it is as per uh, whatever there is on the uh, website of CTRI. So you have public title, which I said that uh, it should be into the layman terms only. Then the scientific title, which is supposed to be uh, approved by the ethical committee and even with the institutional board. Okay, so as far as your PhD or probably your MPT dissertation is considered, it should have been approved by the uh, ethical and funding organizations and even with the uh, authority which has allowed you to do the research okay so these two basic things your public title and scientific title are supposed to be mentioned on your ethics committee also so please make sure uh, now onwards whenever you are if you have not done it please make sure that you do it as far as ctri is considered and why I am saying this and why I am focusing on CTRI is because all the major journals and as you are all knowing that uh, now with the implementation of UGC care list from last June or July, um, majority of uh, the predatory journals are not there in the list. So there are only good journals in the uh, uh, UGC care list which are either indexed in Scopus or either indexed in Web of Science. and uh, or through the UGC uh, scrutiny process. So all these journals practically require your CTRI number when it is clinical trial. Okay, so please make sure that uh, you look after this uh, things very uh, importantly. Secondary IT, ID. So as I said that uh, I, I gave you an example of Moderna uh, company vaccine. So us, uh, that I, uh, us may be, uska ek registration karwaya hoga, US FDA se. So that ID can be mentioned over here or probably when you are doing it research in India, you can register with WHO registry. Okay. Or probably if you are doing a multinational, uh, aapka uska ID bhi iske saath link hona chahiye. Then you have principal investigator's name, address and contact details, which are similar to your uh, demographic details. Contact persons for scientific queries. So if is there any queries related to the protocols or related to ethical issues, kisko contact kiya jai? And contact person for public queries. So if something wrong happens and if a lay person wants to contact, so who should be contacted? Both can be same and both can be different also. Sources of monetary and material support. So if I am doing a study at my organization, that is Study uh, Sarva Vishwa Vidyalaya or Chanchal Ben Lal Patel College of Physiotherapy, I am supposed to mention the same that yes, I am doing. So whatever it is, whether if I am doing my, uh, you know, PhD from Parul University and I'm doing a study at my place. So I'm supposed to mention 
my institute's name and if uh, parallel university is also sponsoring is the primary sponsor or secondary sponsor wo aapko uske next segment mein likhna hai okay then the countries of recruitment whether it is national or multinational so if it is multinational to kahan kahan jayegi theek hai sites of the study okay so whether it is only single sited study or multi sited study so multi sited study hai to kaun si kaun si jagah pe hai okay name of the ethics committee and approval status scan documents of ethics committee approval if approved then you are supposed to so uh, i'll give you my example when i did my uh, first registration with ctri uh, i had an ethics approval from my uh, from the institution where i was supposed to do when i uploaded all these things on to the ctri data set there came a query from their side that your ethics committee is not registered with dcgi okay so dux controller uh, regulatory okay so wo aapki registered nahi hai so this ethics committee is not approved kindly get uh, dcgi registered uh, ethics committee so now we have sedescos and icmr so wahi sedesco ya icmr registered ethics committee hi ye log accept karenge ctri wale so if it is not uh, approved and ohrp karke bhi hai uh, office of human uh, research uh, protocols to uske hisab se bhi if it is ohrp approved then also they will accept it so please make sure ki koi 7 uh, 8 log aise hi baith ke ethics committee ka approval de de that ethics committee will not be recognized by ctri you should have a proper ethics committee i don't say that my ethics committee was not right but probably it was not registered so that is why they have not accepted so what i was supposed to do i had supposed to do take an noc and then i am supposed to take with a new uh, ethics committee or fir i had registered with it okay so second thing is health condition and problem study so wo abhi uh, international classification of functioning ke hisab se aa gaya hai to usme drop down menu hi hai so you are supposed to which joint you are selecting which condition you are selecting so uske hisab se wo seedha icd ya ids number de dega then what is your rct hai single arm study hai kaun sa trial hai uska likhna hai then intervention and comparative agent so group a group b group c whatsoever it is you are supposed to mention it what are your inclusions and exclusion criteria wo bhi mention karna hai method of generating randomization whether it is computer generated lottery method है या रैंडम टेबल नंबर मेथड है व्हाट्स एवर इट इज यू आर सपोज टू मेंशन इट मेथड ऑफ अलोकेशन ऑफ कंसीलमेंट आप कैसे अलोकेट कर रहे हो सील्ड पेपर में कर रहे हो या आप इंडिविजुअल बुला के कर रहे हो व्हाट्स एवर इट इज आर यू ब्लाइंडिंग इट और नॉट ब्लाइंडिंग इट व्हाट आर द फेजेस ऑफ ब्लाइंड्स और नॉट व्हाट इज द प्राइमरी आउटकम सो इन केस ऑफ एफिकेसी ऑफ हैमस्ट्रिंग स्ट्रेचिंग्स इन लो बैक पेन सो माय प्राइमरी आउटकम मे बी पेन ओके एंड सेकेंडरी आउटकम वुड बी लंबार फ्लेक्शन so you are supposed to mention what would be your target sample size in india and if it is multinational what would be your total what are the phases 1 2 3 4 and post marketing so these are basically much more into the drug uh, related cases uh, for us it can be uh, phase 1 and phase 2 also so not not big issue date of first enrollment so as i said if i want it on first august i'm supposed to do it so it generally takes somewhere around 15 days to 20 days of time अगर आपने सही सलामत से ये सब किया है तो एस्टिमेटेड ड्यूरेशन ऑफ ट्रायल कब तक चलेगा सो फॉर एग्जांपल फ्रॉम फर्स्ट ऑगस्ट टिल थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ जुलाई 2021 सो बाय दैट टाइम यू आर सपोज टू कंप्लीट रिक्रूटमेंट स्टेटस अभी तो आपका यही आएगा uh, वो जब लास्ट में होगा रिक्रूटिंग पेंडिंग टेम्पोरि सस्पेंडेड कंप्लीटेड अदर्स विल हैव पेंडिंग ओके and a brief summary about it so it, it can be like a abstract okay so this is what the data set is uh yes then the data set is submitted to ctri after that you register uh, if it is approved they will give you one unique id kind of number jaise aapka ek aadhar card hota hai waisa hi ctri ka number hota hai and that is supposed to be corresponded to each and every uh, participant each and every uh, publication and even with your uh, ethics committee okay ctri verifies the trial from uh, pi principal investigator and contact person of scientific and public query okay so uh, 
इस इसका मतलब ये नहीं हो गया कि वंस यू हैव डन विद द सीटीआरआई एंड एथिक्स कमिटी यू आर नॉट सपोज्ड टू यू अपडेट इट यू आर सपोज्ड टू अपडेट इट दे कीप ऑन सेंडिंग मेल्स एंड एट लीस्ट एट एन इंटरवल ऑफ 6 मंथ्स यू आर सपोज्ड टू अपडेट योर ट्रायल अंटिल एंड अनलेस इट इज फिनिश्ड सो व्हाट आर यू अपडेटिंग whether you are doing your paper publications or whether you are completed the trials or whether you have found out any side effect तो वो सब चीजें CTRI पे आपको अपडेट करना रहता है एंड इवन यू आर सपोज टू इन्फॉर्म विथ योर एथिक्स कमिटी सो टिप्स फॉर रजिस्ट्रेशन फॉर पीजी स्टूडेंट देर इज अ डिफरेंट सेक्शन इन सी टी आर आई ओके सो कंसर्न गाइड ऑफ पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट थीटी शुड अकाउंट एस बी पी आई ओके सो इन केसेस ऑफ पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट थीसेस हुआ इज द गाइड द गाइड शुड बी दिंसिपल इन्वेस्टिगेटर राधर देन दी स्टूडेंट okay who should take the liability of the uh, research and without the attachment of scanned ethics committee of letter the submission of the trial is always incomplete so they make sure you that you are registering and you are getting an approval from ethics committee uh, public trial medical jargons are easy to be avoided i am not going into much of this primary sponsor may or may not be uh, funding agency but it is the responsible for initiation conduct and management of the study and it is the responsibility of sponsor to ascertain whether dcj approval aa gaya hai ki nahi aa gaya primary sponsor cannot say that i have just sponsored i have given you an ift machine that's it that that comes in into my role or probably i have given you my opd area to see the patients no the primary sponsor is also responsible for the Uh, negative outcomes okay and these are the importance link i would click it on one of the link aapko one by one ek links dikhate hain yes so here uh, you can see this is my screen uh, where you have seen world health organizations international clinical trial registry forums yes so here in this what is a clinical trial jitnis ke bare mein likha hai and why to clinical and how to register so here also in this uh, clinical trial registry uska bhi ek data set hai jo uh, aapko fill up karke registry network ke hisab se aapko dena hai this is who website then uh, as i said uh, see this is central drugs standard control organization cetesco सिटेस्को की वेबसाइट है ये जिसके ऊपर इफ यू गो इन टू एथिक्स सेक्शन ओके यू वुड सी द एथिक्स कमिटीज ओके सो यू कैन सिलेक्टेड बाय स्टेट वाइज सो इफ आई सी गुजरात मुझे गुजरात की एथिक्स कमिटी आ जाएगी रिलीज डेट कब हुआ था और कब तक है एंड व्हाट इज द एथिकल कमिटी सो प्लीज सी चेक इट आउट कौन सी एथिक्स कमिटी इसके अंदर है एंड अप्रोच दीज एथिक्स कमिटी फॉर योर स्टडीज विच आर रिलेटेड टू क्लिनिकल ट्रायल ड्रग्स एंड this is from your icmr okay so ethics committee registered with uh, national ethics committee registry okay department of health uh, this is all so ye jo maine bola tha second wali ethics committee biomedical and health research uske bare mein so this is gujarat okay so gujarat okay so you can see uh, different kind of ethics committee in this also and much more interesting is this okay so ctri ctri mein ye raha pdf you can download the clinical trial registry uh, data set jo maine data set aapko bataya mere pdf slide pe wo isme se diet kar sakte you can even go with the e tutorial okay so you see that they have mentioned about who over here icmr and dst so this is what ctri is i will be logging it with my id to make you understand yes so once you enter into log in this uh, you can see clinical trial registry of india okay uh, national institute of medical sciences my name uh, from where i am total trials i have just registered one trial as of now 
Uh, so here, if, in case if there is any clarifications from uh, their side, wo idhar aayega. So this is the CTRI number, CTRI 2018 to uh, this one. Okay. So from 2018, I have registered my trial on 18. Kab wapis mera last query aaya tha? 9-8-2019 ko. Okay. Now what is, it is an interventional type. Uh, for me, it was DCGI clearance was not necessary because I was not into drugs. Okay, so mere liye YCMR wali guidelines follow hoti hai. Clarifications kya the? So if I click it out, see, public title, field, uh, it's, the field is log, scientific title, the field is log, secondary IDs. Okay, so this is, now I can only change if I am interested uh, the ethics committee bare mein. So all this way, if I click here, uh, recruitment status, I have done, I have updated it. So uh, I've completed my trial, so I cannot change it again. So click here to resubmit it, that's it. Okay, uh, IPD sharing details. I have not taken any IPD patients, so it is not there. So it is similar, it is very easy. Uh, you can see like this. Okay, SIA Aiga, Aapka CTRI, it was registered on 19 February 2018, last modified on 18 8 2019. Type of study physiotherapy, type of trial interventional, study randomized parallel group active control trial. What was it? Muscle energy technique with plyometric exercises versus myofascial release technique in chronic lateral epicondylitis. So, all these details, or oh, primary sponsor kya hai? Uh, principal investigator ke baare mein dikha hua hai, ethics committee, it is approved, so approval file, if I click, wo approval file pe aa uh, these are my interventions, so you see, uh, the health condition, as I said, chronic lateral epicondylitis, M77-1, lateral epicondylitis, ye directly ICF se aa chuka hai, intervention, kaun se inclusion criteria, 30 to 45 years, what are the, uh, inclusion criteria, what are the exclusion criteria, I have selected random number table, uh, what will be my pri outcomes, primary outcome mera kya hai, secondary outcome mera kya hai, sample size kitna tha, and a brief summary, so this, uh, and this is what my uh, publication detail says about, so this is how it looks like into CTRI, uh, if there are any queries, uh, it is there into this general query, so for, uh, as of now, there are no queries into this, so, this is what uh, it is there, and if I can get and log into ah. so this is Office for Human Research Protections uh, listings of clinical trial registries. Up, yahan pe ja ke aap dekh sakte ho kaun si kaun si international registries hai. So you can see World Health Organizations, World Medical Organization, Declaration of Helsinki, and North America mein kaun si kaun si is hai, United States ki kaun si hai, Canada ki kaun si hai, Europe ki kaun si hai, Germany ki kaun si hai, and any ethical committee approved with OHRP is also valid in CTRI. So you can see India in CTRI. Okay, so uske baare mein bhi, iske, iske hota hai. So this is what, uh, these are the important links which in case which uh, it can be helpful for you in your future research. Okay, so we had seen, so see. So this is Gujarat. Aap dekh lo, Gujarat mein ICMR ki kitni hai. So you have GCS Medical, GMERS and all those things. So these are the ethics committee. Kab tak valid hai, wo bhi likha ke aata hai. Approval date and it is for two years from the date of approval. Okay, so uh, yes. Uh, Thank you very much for listening to me and uh, uh, patiently looking after this presentation. I'm thankful, once again, I'm thankful to my organization and Parul University uh, for this such a wonderful webinar. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Parth, sir. It was a fantastic webinar. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So, should we end it up? Thank you, Path, sir. Uh, thank for you. It was a wonderful webinar, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.